This morning we're going to take a look at measuring voltage regulator and reference noise using the RSA. Uh, and particularly we're going to use the model RSA 5106A today, which has a bandwidth from 1 hertz up to 6.2 gigahertz. Primarily we're going to be interested in uh, one of the more popular noise bands for voltage regulators, and that's 100 hertz to 10 kilohertz. Before we can measure noise, the first thing we have to do is validate a setup. And so in this particular setup, uh, we have two PicoTest J2140 attenuators, uh, each one set for 40 dB attenuation, and they're cascaded to give us a total of 80 dB. We're also using the PicoTest J2130 bias injector in order to provide 100 Hz bandwidth coupling to the RSA, just to keep the DC out of the RSA. We also have a G5100 AWG that we're going to use as a signal generator to validate our noise. So on the first measurement, what we're looking at is we're looking at an averaged trace. We're averaging 10 cycles, and we have a bandwidth that's currently set on this machine at 10 hertz. Just check that. Yes, we have a resolution bandwidth of 10 hertz. And we're going to show why that is in just a minute. And you can see we have a center band noise flow marker here, and that says that we have roughly 66 nanovolts. And so dividing by the square root of the 10 hertz bandwidth, that would give us about a 20 nanovolt noise floor, which is quite impressive. And before we can actually make measurements, we need to validate that noise floor. And so we're going to add our own signal at 10 millivolts RMS at a frequency of 5 kilohertz so that we can see it on the screen. And we're averaging traces, so you'll see it's actually going to take 10 cycles in order to reach its maximum level. Almost there. Okay, and so we're currently about 950 nanovolts. In fact, we can even turn off the averaging for a minute. Just to make that go a little bit faster. And you can see we're, uh, well, you probably can't see, but we're measuring 1.0 microvolts. And so that's an RMS reading. And our 10 millivolts divided by 80 dB is uh, giving us the right reading of 1 microvolts. Now, the resolution bandwidth is important. If we were to reduce the resolution bandwidth, it would make our math easier because we could divide by 1 hertz instead of the square root of 10. Um, unfortunately, the resolution bandwidth would not be wide enough for us to actually make a reasonable measurement. As you can see now, we get an incorrect measurement of 500 nanovolts. And so we'll choose a resolution bandwidth of 10 hertz. Now that we have our measurement system validated, we can actually go ahead and measure real references. And so we're going to remove our AWG signal here. we can remove our attenuators. And instead, we're now going to use the PicoTest VRTS board, which we used to validate most of our measurements of linear regulators. This is certainly not a clean environment, but we do have a coax cable, and we're using a coax cable in order to connect to the bias injector for our 100 hertz measurement. And now we can measure the noise of this particular device, which happens to be an LM317, uh, which is a, a highly popular voltage regulator. We're going to go ahead and turn our averaging back on. We'll average 10 cycles. And you'll see most of the noise will come out. Now I want to highlight a few things here. Um, the first thing that I want to highlight is that we do have a relatively no low noise floor the peak of this screen is currently 3 microvolts. We have a couple of spurs that are just above the 3 microvolt level. And in fact, we could uh, we could adjust this so we can actually see those. So let's set that at a 4 microvolt reading. Now, one of the things I want to point out is that one of the reasons that I'm opposed to noise density measurements is the noise density measurement doesn't accurately depict these spurs. And every voltage regulator does have such spurs. So we could pick noise floor measurements that are in between these spurs 
and we would get a reading of approximately one and a half microvolts and divided by square root of 10, we'd ha end up with a roughly uh, 500 nanovolt uh, RMS signal. But that doesn't account for all of the high frequency spurs. In the meantime, we can go ahead and we can save this trace just so it doesn't go away. And we'll use a second trace to look at another regulator. In fact, in this case, we'll look at a voltage reference because voltage references are so clean. And so we can use that as a comparison. Okay. And this happens to be a REFO3 voltage reference. You'll see we don't have any such spurs as we had before. And you'll see we do have a uh, noise measurement reading now of about 350 nanovolts, again divided by the square root of 10, which say that we have roughly 100 nanovolt RMS signal there. And so certainly a reference is, is awful good. Now more popular today are LDOs and ULDOs, and so let's see what one of those looks like. And let's reset the averaging here for a minute. So we'll look at a normal trace. And then we can re-average. Okay, and so I'd like to point out that again we have uh, noise spurs that would be thrown off by a noise density measurement. It wouldn't accurately reflect that. Also you can see now that we have uh, very high noise in the low frequency range. That's one of the places that we generally don't like to see it because it's very difficult to filter at those low, low frequencies. But we can go ahead and we can save this trace also. And we'll go ahead and we'll use a third one. And in the third trace, I want to show you one of our latest regulators, which is a regulator designed specifically for uh, both high demand applications and ultra low noise applications such as high performance clocks and digital circuits. And so now you can see the noise signature of this particular regulator and I'll go ahead and I'll turn the averaging back on just to get rid of some of the random noise. And so you see we still do have some spurs though much lower in amplitude and those also would kind of be thrown off by averaging the measurement. Uh, but you'll also see that our noise floor is even much lower than a typical LM317 and in fact actually quite close to the noise floor of the voltage reference that we measured. And so not all regulators are created equal uh, but fortunately the Tektronix RSA 5106A can measure them all equally. Well thanks and that's how we measure noise.